Hi, everyone, and welcome to First in Cedar Knitting. This is a podcast where I talk about my making, mostly knitting, um, some crochet this time around, and just um, some other stuff, probably some sewing a little later on in the summer, which I'm really excited about. My name is Megan, and I am a knitter, and I live here in Sagamihara, Japan, which is a suburb of Tokyo, Tokyo City here in Japan. Uh, we've been here for about a year and a half, a little over, and we'll be here until November with uh, the U.S. Army. And then we'll move back home, and home in the U.S. is Denver, Colorado for us. Um, I'm excited to share with you guys all what I've been doing. Again, I'm back this week hoping to make it pretty much weekly um, podcast. Uh, so let's start with um, what I'm wearing. Um, and I have a finished object that I am wearing today. This is the Zweig sweater by Caitlin Hunter. And I did it in uh, Rambouillet. I don't have a tag. I had a tag back there. My thing's really messy to ignore. Um, a Rambouillet Merino um, fingering weight here that I bought in Japan. Um, I'll put the details down below if you're interested. Um, but yeah, these bag, let me stand up real quick without bumping the table. It is got a long, longer yoke. So my arm pits right here and the yoke goes down pretty far. I finished this um, a couple of days ago not very long ago. I started it last week while my husband and my daughter were traveling to Nagasaki and I was just home with the toddler and it was rainy and there was nothing else to do. Um, the sleeves are a little short and they're a bit wider than I like. Um, when I do this, I pull them up. They don't tend to stay. They tend to come right back down. Um, they ended up being a little bit short just because I ran out of yarn but it's meant to be a springtime sweater, so it doesn't really bother me. It actually is kind of nice to have a little bit of a breeze coming up in here, but I do feel it. I might go back and start the decreases. On I didn't follow the instructions for the decreases. I think she actually has you knit it straight. I also didn't put the texture that was supposed to go on the sleeve in the bottom part of the body. Um, it also is supposed to have a strip of color work on top and underneath, and I skipped that because I, I had a contrast color, um, not a contrast color, but a speckled yarn that I was going to do the color work and the lace work in, and then I started it, and I didn't really like it, and I really like this green color, so I decided to just omit all of that and just make it completely green. Uh, this is like the fourth or fifth version of this sweater that I've made. Um, I have a purple one that I wear a lot that's the same as this. And I, I really like the simplicity of, um, excuse me, I really like the simplicity of just one color um, to wear without having to pick out a contrast color. So that's what I'm wearing, my Zweig by Caitlin Hunter. And I'm obsessed with it. I wore it yesterday until it started raining and then it got too chilly. And I'm wearing it again today, which today is May 2nd. I've been seeing a lot of me made May posts where you um, <clears throat> post every day about or and wear uh, a handmade item. I am also wearing these beautiful earrings <coughs> made by my sister. She gave them to me for Christmas. She has drops of these very occasionally. Um, she doesn't do this full time, but this is one of the things that she does. And they're absolutely gorgeous. I love wearing them. They're very light. They're not heavy at all. Um, but look at that embroidery. Just beautiful. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what I'm wearing. Um, I think it took me a week and a half to make it and then it took um, a day or so to dry from the blocking because of the lace it needed a good 
blocking and I really do like wearing it. I usually just wear a white t-shirt under it so you can kind of see the lace through. Um, they always come out, I don't know, if, I don't gauge swatch just because I've made this before. I know that a fingering weight yarn will be close enough and it is, and maybe I should make it just a little bit the next size down, maybe next time. Next time, the next one I make, I'll make it a size smaller because I did you know on my pattern which size I made this one. So this is what I'm wearing. Also, my only finished backpack for the week. Okay, next on to my works in progress. Um, I've got a new work in progress. It's sort of an old work in progress, and I'm really excited about it. Um, but let's start right off. Look like this in my knee made. I made this one. It's a Halloween print little project bag back when I had my sewing machine back at home in Denver. I did not bring it with me to Japan. I am working on the anchors tee. I think I added maybe a centimeter, about a half inch of more on the body. This is I don't know what size needle it is. I'm gonna say maybe a 2.5 millimeter. Um, very small needle and this body part is taking quite a bit. I might do a try on soon just to kind of see how it's fitting on the body, but not much to show there. I maybe will put a stitch marker in um, to show how much I've progressed between episodes. Little buddy's having a rough time. He needs a nap. I'm going to wrap this up in a little bit and then he can go nap before his sister gets home from school. So adding a little stitch marker here to show where I was. Silver stitch marker. Next episode we'll see. Maybe I'll finish it before then. So another work in progress. It keeps getting hot and then rainy and cold. So it kind of goes back and forth. Um, working on that. So that's with a number one. Um, whip number two is this silver gray cardigan and I'm in the middle of a row. Da -da -da. Knitting it. So here it is. These are the sleeves. It's got a fairly deep yoke. It is very I think the make of the fabric makes it very drapey. Um, so it's very, it's gonna be very nice to have later this spring when I just need something light to carry, excuse me, something light to carry around just to wear inside. So I haven't made much progress. That's where I am on the body. Um, probably about two inches and I need to keep just going down. I'm making this with a Japanese yarn it's a Rambouillet wool cotton made by Daruma. And it is sixty percent Rambouillet merino wool and forty percent cotton. So the cotton makes it heavier, gives it a great drape to it. It's the Rambouillet, which is what this is made out of. Um then gives it some memory. And I, I find that I do like this 60-40 combination with a little bit more wool and a little less cotton. That one's just living in a little dino bag that I bought at a little dollar store here oh, from local to us. And then since I finished this green sweater, I pulled out a languishing whip that I had, which is this green sweater. And this is just a basic raglan in some dyed by me yarn. The raglan on this is really long, I'm realizing. It's gonna be so oversized. I don't even remember what pattern this is, which is interesting because I don't know what I'm gonna do for the sleeves. since I don't know what pattern it is. Um, I didn't make a project page for it in my Ravelry, which I'm really bad about. And I have a notebook, but 
I started this when my daughter started basketball season and I was sort of between two notebooks. I was right at the end of one, so I wasn't writing everything down because I didn't have much room left, but I hadn't bought a new notebook for my knitting, so I didn't have um, a new spot to just write this down in. So hopefully I'll look through my old one, but hopefully I can find it. It is very oversized. I don't know what I was thinking. But this is just yarn that I dyed, um, and if you've seen hand dyed yarn, you know all appreciation goes out to them. This multicolors and these speckles left here was completely unintentional. When I dyed this, I did not prep the dye appropriately, and so that's why it's so incredibly tonal and variegated. And it just, it grabbed on some spots and it didn't in others. And so my idea with this was to knit the garment at a loose gauge. And maybe that's why it's so big um, now that I'm thinking back on it. So knit the garment at a loose gauge and then over dye it once it was done um, so that I could immediately start on the project. But then, you know, once I was done and maybe it's not such a bad idea. Like it's a very light green, doesn't, not an attractive green. Like it's not something that you're like, oh, that's a stunning green. It's not. So when I finish this, I think I will definitely be over dyeing it, which I will share here on the channel when I do. This is another me made little pouch um, with a square bottom. Oh, oh, that's loud. Oh, okay. I'll be right back. And last but not least, my new cast on slash whip, not really cast on, um, sort of new, sort of old. In some of my first episodes, I was talking about wanting to start a crochet blanket. As the weather warms up, I kind of do that every year. Last year, I made a stash busting granny stripe blanket that was blues and purples and grays so some cool tones in there and uh, i really enjoyed making that um, had all of my scraps in this huge basket that i carry around in the summer sit on the grass and work on it so this year i wanted to do something a little bit more intentional and so i had picked out a color palette of oranges and blues which um, just i had seen some inspiration on pinterest of some quilts and some home decor images and I just, I really liked the idea of orange and blue. And so I started working and I had my scraps and I bought some new stuff and I started with another swatch for a granny square stripe, granny stripe blanket. And um, just to get my gauge to see how many stitches I would have to start off with. And as I worked on it, I did not like it at all. I didn't like it. Um, it's not that it wasn't enjoyable. I just wasn't enjoying the finished product. It was looking too messy, not sophisticated enough for what I was thinking and what the color palette had inspired in me. Um, and so then I had been hearing a lot about the Sweet Shop Blanket by Laura Penrose. And I've never knit a blanket. I've knit some baby blankets, but I've never knit like a row blanket or bigger. Uh, everything blanket wise has always been crochet. So I bought the pattern and I started and I made my squares a little bit smaller. I had made the, the size she calls for and I found that it was too big. It took me too long. So it felt like I wasn't progressing fast enough. And so I did a smaller size. This is the back and I did not enjoy this at all. I did not enjoy the short rows. I did not enjoy picking up the stitches. Um, I do like the fabric that it makes. It's quite thick, but the process of making it was just not enjoyable. Like I didn't even do the fourth square. Um, so then, and so then I was like, well, I like to crochet. I was like, maybe I'll do similar, but in crochet. And so then I tried doing half and half granny squares with and started putting them together and just again 
didn't mind the process of making it. It just wasn't giving the vibe of sophistication that I had been wanting. Okay, don't yell, don't yell. Ooh, say please, Mama. Here. Here. Thank you. Go sit down. I love you. He is ready for his nap. His nap's in a few minutes, but we'll wrap this up. Um, so after I finished the sweater, I didn't, I was having a hard time thinking about what next. And really, I didn't need to start something new because I have three unfinished projects here. But the itch hit, and I did some research, and I found this granny square and I knit it up in some of my leftovers. This gold is along with Anna, along with Anna, it's a French brand. Um, I made a top out of it so I had a little bit of it left and then this is Yarn Cafe Creations, their DK one which is left over from a little hat that I made my son this last winter. The two of them together look really pretty and so I made this motif. And it hit. That's what I'm going to do with my orange and blue yarn. So I pulled my stash out, started working on it, and we are starting a crochet blanket. And so I decided that all of the centers are going to be the different colors that I have. And then I'm going to use the navy to be the outline. So there's one. Here is a second one. This one's one of the orange ones. And a third one is complete. And this one is a Nicole, uh, Hugh Loco mini. Just absolutely gorgeous. I think the color of this one's called Magpie. And it is just the variation in there. So this has the level of sophistication that I wanted for this color palette. Um, I have a few more centers done. So there's another one. I have 20 gram minis. So the 20 gram minis can make two squares. I have a solid orange, another light blue, a lighter orange. And I am oops, sorry, currently on the last row of the center of this one. Also another Q Loco. The color on this one is just gorgeous. It's I think called Yes I Canyon. I don't know, but you'll if you go to her webpage you'll see it on there. And it is just gorgeous. Maybe this one is Yes I Canyon, which is my next one is another orange, but this one has more greens in it. Um, I also got her current, which is the solid, and I think this one's called Nectarine. Two more oranges there. I've got a blue, bright blue coming up. And lots and lots more in this bag. But this is my border one, or my what people call a sashing color. And it is navy blue, and this is just the navy blue from Cascade um, Heritage Fingering. And anyway, I am super excited. I'm super excited to start piecing them together. So, right? I'm like, eh, eh, eh. Like, it's just, the, it's a little bit more delicate. I, I'm, I'm really excited. Really, really, I'm going to show them again. Really excited for this project. And it's just, it's going to look great. It's going to look great in, um, almost put it in my drink. It's going to look great in our living room. Um, I think it's going to bring some color in. And it's not going to look, I'm hoping it doesn't look super crafty, which is what I, I didn't want it to look like. So. Super excited.
And that's it. That's all I have going on right now. Um, now, as far as just some life stuff, um, my daughter is in a play on base this summer or late spring. And I got roped into helping with costumes. So there's going to be a little bit of sewing in my future. The lady that's in charge of it is said she's got a sewing machine set up for me to use when the time comes. So I'm going to get to use my practice my sewing skills, which I'm really excited about. They're doing Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. My daughter is going to be both a squirrel and what they're calling a candy kid. Um, so it's really sweet. She gets to go to play rehearsal, learn some songs, learn some dances, and be a part of that production, which we're really excited to do. Um, some other things in life. Um, we went to Disneyland before the weekend, so last Friday. Today is Thursday, May 2nd, and we went to Disneyland Friday, April 26th um, to celebrate my birthday. My birthday is May 4th, and we went early because um, this week is a holiday week. Um, there's several national holidays, so lots of people have off, and we thought it would be less busy, and it was, and so we were able to go and ride the rides that we wanted, and we didn't have ginormously long lines to wait through we went once before and one of the lines is like two and a half hours to get on the ride um so we were able to do that and it was so much fun it was just me and my husband we had a great time and then sunday i had a 10k race which i've been prepping for um i was expecting it to be a morning race like most races are but it was in the middle of the afternoon and it was a hot sunny day and so that was rough but I completed it. I did not beat my time from my previous 10K, but that's okay. Um, yeah, baby? Mama. Yeah, Mama. Yeah. And that's it on my stuff. Other than that, we've just been here um, doing stuff and living life. We've got some traveling. Just a minute, baby. Just a minute. You want some? And um, we will be traveling in May and then again in June after the play week and just doing school, trying to finish school out strong, was having deep conversations with my eight-year-old last night about the importance of kind of powering through the end of school, which she's trying her hardest to do. Second grade can be rough. Um, and I think she's, I think she's ready to get out and have summer break, so. Um, my house is also a mess, absolutely destroyed. I cleaned it up that Sunday before my race and then left and did my race and left my husband with the kiddos, came back, and it was just destroyed. So they had fun while I was gone, which is fine. I just feel like I haven't really caught up since then, and it's already Thursday again. But that's fine. We'll make time. Um, but, yeah, so that's it on my stuff. Um, I'm so glad you're here. I am so glad you're watching. If you've made it this far, please like and subscribe. Um, it's really encouraging. I've had a few people start subscribing and a little bit more um, exposure. So I'm really excited to continue doing this. Um, and like I said in my first and second episodes, like I'm excited to share what I'm making and my experience and my journey in my creative world. So. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to comment. I right now don't really have very many people watching, so I will definitely be answering every single comment that is put on there. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. See you next week.